Hi, my name is Kurt Gessler, and I will be taking you through a quick tutorial on Google Fusion Tables map visualizations. These offer a very simple and powerful way to display geobased data. For our example, I'll be using some weather data from the National Weather Service. Nothing augments storm coverage like a good snowfall map, and that's what we'll be making today. I already have the site bookmarked, like any good content producer, and the National Weather Service offers some tabular style data. Not difficult to extract. You could even copy and paste it right into a spreadsheet, which is what I've already done right here. Here are our snowfall totals by town. You'll see that there are currently just towns and snowfall totals. There's no latitudes and longitudes. I pretty much keep those in a separate file since these are set stations that we see repeated, so it's very easy to keep those ready at hand. Now, we toggle over to our second spreadsheet here, the town coordinates, as you can see. So we're going to combine these. What I'll probably do is just add two columns here, and then paste these into our file. And there we go. So we're going to save this. I'll just save this as test. And then we're going to take this spreadsheet and upload it to Google Drive. I will click on Create. And we want the Fusion Table Experimental it's been experimental for many years now, and I hope it doesn't change. We will browse from this computer. There's our test file right here. Click Next. And this will start to chew that data. And there we have it right here. One more time. Let that finish. And then pretty fast now that's imported this. Now you could have started out with a uh, Google spreadsheet as well too. Now I like to go back to the classic look for Google Fusion Tables. I find it just a little easier to work in. So here's our town, our latitude, our longitude, and our snowfall total. I will now click Visualize in the map because that's what we're interested in. And you see right away it's already plotted all of our points for us here. And if you hover over those or click any of those, it'll tell you here's the town of Genoa, its Latin, its launch, and its snowfall total. So we're already pretty close to being done, but we really don't want some of that data being shown. And it'd be nice to uh, visually highlight which towns had more snow and which towns had less. And we were able to do that. We'll start by configuring styles. You see the default is using one icon. We're going to want to use buckets. In fact, we'll want to use probably about four buckets. We're going to divide this up. Now I know the snowfall totals. Whoop, hold on here. Let me go to column snowfall totals. And you see the range is from five inches of snow to roughly 12. So I'm going to take this, go eight, and go 10 here. And we'll see what that gets us. Um, and then we'll probably color coordinate. Red seems like the scariest, so we'll stay with that. Maybe yellow for 8 inches or more. Green for 6 inches. And uh, blue seems fairly calm. So let's save our changes right there now. And as you see, it already denotes by color who got hit more and who got off fairly easy, like the folks in Streeter that only got five inches of snow. Next, again, I mentioned we got to hide some of the extraneous data here that we don't need. I'm going to bump up the typeface a bit. So we're going to go to Configure Info Window. Let's um, turn these off, that launch, and then go into Custom, and maybe adjust this a bit. I think it's probably pretty clear that that's a town, and we don't have to necessarily say town. 
but it might be nice to bold it. The really nice thing about uh, Google Fusion Tables map visualizations is that they offer, you know, they accept here in this interface window uh, CSS, kind of old deprecated HTML, any number of things to get the styling that you want. Oh, let me get my close bold in the right place. Uh, snowfall totals probably don't need that bold. Should probably make sure that clear what increment we're talking about here. And then we have style. Let's set the width of our window to about 250 px as well too because it was a little airy. And we hit save. Let's see if this is what we want here. A little on the small side, but it kind of does what we want. Maybe we can bump up the typeface perhaps if we wanted to. Here we go, 1.2 EM. See if that fills up the space a little better. I'd say that looks pretty good. Make sure the thing is wrapping oddly here. You have your town, you have your snowfall total. Now, so we've created this lovely map here, but it is private to us right now and nothing we can do with it so let's get an embeddable link this is a two-step process here you see right here it says this table is private and will not be visible let's first change the visibility and we want to make it public on the web for anyone to see our work this will also allow the embed code to work so let's click on get link again and say the embed is about 600 by 500 you could just grab all of this data and you would be done now what I like to do as well is add maybe a key to all of this data so you have some at a glance um, way to reference what each point represents and I've done some color sampling and created some boxes here and what I ended up with in really under about 20 minutes was a map like this. Quick headline, here's your embedded Google Fusion table, and then a quick CSS reference here so you can know right away that Mendota got only 5 inches, whereas the good people of Elburn got 10. As you can see, really powerful requires very little technical skill and frankly gets pretty decent result. Thank you very much for watching.